In the book, Archetype of the Apocalypse, the late Edward Edinger, 1999, spoke of the constellation of the apocalyptic archetype at the turn of the millennium. In this video, I want to suggest that this constellation is very real and is rapidly changing the world we're living in. I suggest the proliferation of ideas, images and events across a wide spectrum of society, which may arguably be termed apocalyptic in character, are synchronistically linked and conclude with some thoughts on the implication of the constellation of the apocalyptic archetype in our time. The period which I've investigated is 1995 to 2012. The four areas that uh, we will look at in this video are popular culture, world events, formal discourse, and the imaginal field, all in order to illuminate the question, where is this going? So starting first with the apocalypse in the arts, the period in question, 1995 to the present, uh, has seen close to 100 English language cinematic releases dealing with the apocalyptic theme. A few of the more notable worth mentioning are Deep Impact and Armageddon, released almost simultaneously in 1998, AI, Knowing, The Day After Tomorrow, The Matrix, The Road, The Book of Eli, Terminator Salvation, I Am Legend, and Wally. During the same time, we've seen over 30 television series, including Jericho, Survivors, and The Poison Sky. Over 90 English language books published, uh, including How to Survive a Robot Uprising, The Great Winter Trilogy, Mother of Storms, The Passage, and Pandemia. And during the period, over 50 computer games released onto the market, dealing with the apocalypse and the associated dystopian theme. Moving now to the, the area of apocalyptic premonitions and predictions. The end of days and the parousia, which is the second coming of Christ, was calculated by James Usher, 1581 to 1656, Anglican Archbishop of Ireland, to occur on the 23rd of October, 1996. And this was later confirmed by Sir Isaac Newton, using mathematics and astronomy to verify Usher's dating. As the world approached the year 2000, millennial fascination took on a strong apocalyptic overtone with numerous Christian sects predicting the second coming of Christ and the fulfillment of the prophecies and revelations. Notable are Waco and the Branch Davidians, where 80 people died in a botched government raid in 1993. Now, even though this falls slightly before the period we're speaking about, it does bear mentioning. The Heaven's Gate cult and the collective suicide of 39 of their members in 1997. Added to the religious fervor of the occasion was the belief in the possibility of disaster more firmly rooted in secular beliefs in the form of the Y2K bug. This anticipated the collapse of the vast computerized systems controlling our financial and essential services being unable to make the date change from 1999 to 2000. The period saw fascination with Nostradamus interpreted by many as predicting an apocalyptic war as occurring in July 1999. And then the one that everyone knows about that and they're still looming, the, the Mayan calendar ending on the 21st of December 2012, an event that's received lots of publicity, frequently been the subject of conference material and videos, and has been latched onto by the Mayanists and the New Age as being a time of great change and a transformation to a new level of consciousness. Then last, but by no means least, I'd like to mention a prediction from the venerated master himself. Carl Gustav Jung is reported by Marie-Louise von Franz to have made a deathbed prediction of the apocalypse as occurring 50 years from his death. Uh, Jung died in 1961, so 2011 is the 50th anniversary of his death. A time which he predicted would see vast tracts of the earth destroyed, but that fortunately humanity would survive. Moving now to world events, natural and social, of a cataclysmic nature, suggesting a radical shift in the existing order. Dealing first with events on a social level, the two most significant events of the last decade have been the 9-11 Twin Towers attack and the subsequent military action in the Middle East by the Americans. 
and the economic crash of 2008 and the subsequent global recession which we're still dealing with today that has seen a number of EU countries either bankrupted outright or on the verge of bankruptcy uh, and three years later we are far from a recovery. Marked shifting of economic and political clout from west to east with the rise of the Chinese economy and the decline of Americas and Europe's. And the recent political uprising that has swept across the Middle East with long established autocracies being violently challenged and in some cases overthrown, uh, most recently in the case of Libya. Moving now to the area of natural disasters, beginning in late 2004, a flurry of massive tsunami spawning earthquakes have rocked the world, first slamming Indonesia, then Chile, and most recently Japan. Tremblers of that size are rare indeed. Only seven quakes as large, or larger than 8.8 .8 on the Richter scale, the magnitude of the last February's Chilean event, have occurred since 1900. So what does it mean that three of those seven shocks have happened almost within the span of the last six years. While some scientists argue that these mega quakes could be the vanguard of an extended outburst of strong seismic events, many others suggest that the apparent cluster of recent tremblers is nothing more than a statistical fluke. Most recently and uppermost in our minds is perhaps the March 2011 Japanese tsunami and the resulting natural disaster, not least the nuclear form fallout in Fukushima. Moving now to the area of formal engagement with the apocalyptic theme by scientists, researchers, the media, academia, various governmental and non-governmental institutions. Many areas of concern dealing with the theme of sustainability and the challenges of maintaining or creating a peaceful and prosperous global community in the future. Foremost among these concerns are climate change in the threatened biosphere, the rise of religious fundamentalism and tied to this the failure of secularism and scientific enlightenment to create a more harmonious global community. Population growth and the scarcity of natural resources. Diminishing fossil fuels. And the almost unimaginable impact of technology on our society now and in the next few decades, including the looming dark fantasy of Ray Kurzweil and the Singularity Institute regarding their, their predictions of a transhuman or post-human age in the future. Let's consider now the impact of these events and the presence of the apocalyptic archetype in the imaginal field. World events, popular culture and formal discourse on the theme mediated through the imaginative capacity. It is this last area that I want to focus on where the experience of synchronicity, meaning making and a shifting symbolic axis is most experienced and becomes real, at least in terms of the imaginal and the symbolic. We can hardly overestimate the effects of the media in all its forms. The almost constant and ubiquitous flow of imagery and information through the TV, the web, social media and mobile devices. The level of access that this gives us to images of disasters and events as they unfold and the constant information feed that accompanies this imagery, the feed from social media and the discussions that ensue on forums, Facebook, Twitter and blogs as if changed the way these events affect us. Who can ever forget the images of the American Airlines planes flying into the Twin Towers or the footage from Thailand of the awesome devastation of the 2004 Sumatra Adman earthquake and the Indian Ocean tsunamis? No longer can we ask for whom the bell tolls, for most assuredly it tolls for us. I'd like to consider the inversion of the utopian idea of the 20th century that information technology systems would create more free time and lighten the workload of the workforce. The inversion of the utopian idea of the 20th century that information technology systems would create more free time and lighten the workload of the workforce. The inhuman levels of information we're now being asked to process on a daily level. The constant shifting of our knowledge base which never allows us to settle in any paradigm for longer than it takes to receive a text message or log onto the web. The question I think we need to ask ourselves is, are these machines working for us or are we working for them? All of which contribute to an acute level of anxiety about the current state of world affairs 
and grave concerns about the future and sustainability of the economic, political and social systems that we've lived in up to this time. Why has the apocalyptic fascination reached such a crescendo in the last 15 years? What is the synchronicity pointing towards? Firstly, the awareness that the collective psyche of the traditional first world and its satellites is in a fragile state. That the term apocalyptic time may not be entirely inappropriate and certainly on a personal level has been a reality for millions already in the last decade. And with a hugely increased level of connectedness that the global community has through the media, the immediacy of any cataclysm is enhanced in its ability to further destabilize us. Consider the very real possibility of more natural disasters along the lines of what we've been witnessing over the last few years, or a truly cataclysmic terrorist attack of the kind which dwarfs 9-11, or many other social, political and economic possibilities for wide-scale disaster and the further disruption of the existing social order. It doesn't require too much imagination to imagine how something like this could send us further into a downward spiral. And where something like that would end, no one can say, but quite possibly what emerges post such a time will be radically different from the current global order. The other devil is by far the more sinister. And that is, if the current rate of technological development and the effect of interconnectedness and the world wide web are not rudely interrupted by something along these lines, then the change itself will continue to radically reform our society as it already is, such that the idea of end of days, if we mean by days, the world as it was prior to 2000, is also not entirely incorrect. The question is, what kind of future will our children inherit? Well, for one, it will bear scant resemblance to the world our parents lived in, and in a sense will be far less human. If by the word human we denote a traditional sense of values, distinct and heterogeneous cultural identities, a certain pace of life, a relatively stable social and ideological context, and perhaps most significantly, a reasonably fixed idea of what it means to be a human being. The changes in society through science and secularism, long ago saw Max Weber, the eminent sociologist, talk about the loss of the numinous in the form of disenchantment. But I think that the reduction of the domain of the human being is far from over. Neuroscience, genetic engineering, artificial intelligence systems and virtual reality present a profound and quite possibly unanswerable challenge to the idea of human dignity. Now possibly one could say that the human being stopped being something special a long time ago, that a man-centered view of the universe is archaic and went out with Copernicus and Darwin. Nevertheless, we are now reaping the bitter fruit of these advances in scientific thinking and the increasing domain of the objective encroaching on our subjective existence. The highest aspiration we currently have and to which we strive, despite the inconvenience of the unconscious and unplanned interruptions in our schedule, is a materialist utopia. For those that happen to see it, this was brilliantly portrayed in the movie Limitless. In the movie, the protagonist, Eddie Mora, uh, takes a tablet, NZT47, which hugely enhances his neurological function. By taking this tablet, he transcends his human frailty and becomes the man we all aspire to be today. He is able to function with sufficient speed and competence to truly belong in the coming digital age. And this movie, I think, is a true reflection of the spirit of our time. The idea of soul and human dignity is on its way out. It's a province of old men who can no longer keep pace. But the true dream is total immersion in the materialist utopia being promised by the technologists. The question though is, just how far down the rabbit hole will we descend? Well, if one places any stock in the futurists, quite possibly further down than any of us ever imagined, maybe far enough down so that the spark of what we call the human spirit may well be extinguished to make room for the next evolutionary wave. I want to echo Zizek here and say we need to highlight this radical change and not fall victim to its renormalization, allowing it to pass unchallenged and unconsidered into our future accepted and unconscious ideology. I don't think the question is any longer about the possibility of re-enchantment. I would suggest rather it is about whether the basis of our humanity the way we define ourselves and the established symbolic order will survive much into the 21st century. And that, I think, is the true apocalypse we face.